Hello. In this video, I would like to show a little bit about memory management of uh, Rust. Uh, I'll start with a string. So I create a string here, an empty string with st string new. And uh, then I would like to print out uh, the address of this uh, variable. So I call print and then, and uh, in the curly braces, I put an AP sign and that will, uh, and I provide the text, well, not the text, the variable. Actually, I need to put an ampersand in front of it. And that's how it works. And uh, if I run this code now, cargo run, it will print out the address of this variable. I can also use another uh, pair of curly places and call the text uh, SPTR. That will uh, return the address of the actual uh, data, the actual text, uh, the actual string that I that's currently empty. And I need to put a colon question mark in order to make it print well. So uh, I run cargo run and it will tell me that um, this is the address of the variable itself. And the variable uh, contains basically three things. Uh, the location of the string, which is uh, this is going to be the location of the relocation of the string, the length of the string and the capacity. So I can also print out these two. And I would like to print out the uh, the length of the string, which is text, text len, and the capacity. Uh, so this is the capacity. And text capacity. Capacity. Ah, uh, capacity. Yeah. Okay. So these are the the four things I'm printing out. Let's see if it works. It works. Well, I created the string. The string is uh, is new, so the string is empty, and uh, therefore both the size and the capacity is zero. Now we can uh, change the string by saying text, and then we can push onto it a character. Okay. And let's say the character A. Nothing special. Okay, so this is how we push on this. Now, of course, we can't do this if I press F8, we'll say that cannot mutate immutable variable text because we didn't define the variable as mutatable. So M-U-T, and now it will work. Okay, once I did this, I, I would like to print it again, everything, to see what happens now as I added a, a character and a single letter character. So now what we can see is that the the size is one because there is uh, the character this character is an ascii character so it only takes one byte uh, but automatically uh, rust created allocated eight bytes there uh, so there are eight, eight bytes can go there and you can see here uh, at the bottom this is the address of the actual string where the string is located that letter a and we can go on now and see what happens if i add another letter okay uh, I can actually, maybe I should also print out the, the string itself. And it, this brings me to something. So here, I would like to print out also the text itself. And for that, I need another pair of curly braces. And now I would need to copy it here, but I, I don't want to do that because now I'm going to have to do it several times. So instead of having this line copy pasted several times, I would like to convert this into a um, macro. So I create a macro, I just typed in macro rules, and let's see, uh, print, let's call it print. And inside it gets a variable. So it's a variable, which is an expression, expression, yes. And then I can put this print statement there. So I, I'm just taking this print statement now and putting it inside here. And of course here, instead of this text, I need to put the var this dollar var. So I am replacing all of them. Probably I could do it with a, as, with a global replace, but uh, I don't know, didn't do it. Okay. So each one of them is a dollar var. And I think it looks fine. There's now I can use here this uh, PRT exclamation mark and pass this text, text, right? And it should print out, well, almost the same, except that it uh, now also should print out the, the value. Okay, this didn't, uh, uh, sorry, 
one, two, three, four values, and it prints out one, two, three. And of course, the text itself is empty, so uh, that's why we can't. This is very confusing. It was very confusing why you didn't see the text, but it's an empty string. So I put a single quote around them just so we can see it more easily. And now you can see that in the inside the single quote, there is nothing. So that's the string. And now I can copy paste this one, this statement here, and we'll see the next one. Okay. So here we are. Uh, we have the address and then the, the second address and the text. And now this time it you can see the uh, that there is a string A in there. And it's in single quotes. Let me let's not conf get confused. Those are single quotes just for uh, the demo, just to, to show it. And actually, something I don't really like here is that the fact that they're not aligned. So let's put here an alignment. I think here, I think if I put 10, then it will probably align it uh, not there. I need to put the 10 on the other side of the question mark, on the, on the, on the columns. So this way, it will uh, create 10, uh, it will be 10 wide. Now it's not enough, apparently. So let's put, make it 15 and hope that it will uh, be enough characters. Okay, so and I'm aligned uh, much better, I think. Okay, so uh, what happens now if I enlarge the string further and add the new uh, character? And this time again, just a single letter B. Okay, this time uh, the length grew by one again. The capacity didn't change uh, because it still had spa place, uh, space for it. And uh, the location of the, of the variable didn't change and the location of the string didn't change, just the string. So another way to enlarge a string is by uh, adding or pushing onto it another string. So here I can put here another string, which let's say one, two, three, four, five, six characters long, but then it's not push, but push str, that would be. So this is an str here, and basically, and then I can push it on. Okay, let's see what happens now. So. Now there are eight characters in there, eight, eight lengths, the same, uh, the capacity is still eight and the rest uh, looks correct. So what happens if I push one more onto this? Okay, so here I push one more, just one single character more, let's call it X. Okay, then of course, uh, we'll need to allocate one more, uh, the, the length will group is one more, but it needs to allocate eight, or it doesn't need to allocate, but that's what Rush does, allocates eight more. And then I can go in on with it. Uh, of course, it might be a good idea to change a little bit here. And uh, I think if I put uh, uh, colon two here, I think then it will uh, do this, the trick, and will the alignment will be ready. Yes, okay, so then we can align the, uh, the columns as well. Okay. So what happens if I push more uh, string on it? Let's push something longer. One, two, seven, eight, nine, and a lot of extra numbers. Okay. So now it got quite uh, long, 33 characters, 33 bytes, sorry. And apparently the capacity was also uh, uh, 33. So it's, a, it's strange. I don't know why it exactly happened 33, but maybe because it was... It didn't uh, allocate any any further. So everything is, looks fine. Uh, the string it just was just growing. But what happens if here, okay? So nothing really changed except that it get, got longer and longer. What happens if here, so after uh, adding two characters, let's say, or even after adding one, the first character, I create another variable, let name equal foobar and make it a string, okay? String uh, from. So this is now a string and I can also print out what happens with this. So I would like to know where is that located and it's called the name. Okay, so let's see what happens now. What we can see is that this foobar, so here the, the address of, the, of our main string, Okay, the one that's called text is at BA 
zero. That's in hexadecimal uh, num numbers. Hexa is fine. Uh, we don't need to care about the rest now. Uh, this foo bar, you can see it's uh, at C zero. So because it means uh, every letter here is 16, so it means 32 uh, bytes later. And then we add uh, more characters here. The or original string sta sta stays in the same location. Enlarge slightly more, it's still in the same location. But here, and this is the change, okay? Then we added a lot more characters that became more than those 32 that was between the BA0 and the BC0. There were no more place to grow that string because the original string uh, had um, some space here, okay? Eight characters, basic eight bytes here. Uh, but after uh, finding 32 bytes, uh, after having 32 bytes, uh, started the new string, this foobar uh, string. So when our string wanted, when we wanted to grow our string beyond that 32, suddenly Rust had to reallocate the whole thing. So Rust moved the whole thing, my string, from here to this new address, allocated the new space there, I guess freed this space, hopefully, and uh, that's it. Uh, so this you have to remember then when automatically Rust can enlarge a string, but sometimes if there is not enough space uh, to continuously uh, enlarge a string or other variables, then it will have to relocate it. And you can, and this costs, okay? So this relocation costs uh, the time that you allocate the memory, the time that copies the data and so on. And with small strings, it doesn't matter too much, but if you do it a lot and with large things, strings, then it will take a lot of time. And for that, you could actually pre-allocate uh, more space. You can tell when you create a string, you can pre-allocate more space, but we are not going into that now. Uh, if you like this video, then please, well, like it and follow the channel. And hopefully if enough people do it, then I will continue with the, this kind of videos and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.